All right, Lantern, so as announced yesterday, Limit Breaker quests are coming back. In this case, it's scheduled to come back in less than a week's time on the 8th of September. And with this quest returning, we can get upwards to 500 Transcendence Points and also 50 Orbs. And for those that like the extra bit of challenge, a new quest to conquer and try and go for our highest possible stage you possibly can go for. This time, considering the rules that we do have, we might be able to get a new world record. At least someone in the community will, not me. But I am very curious to see what the highest number will be for a particular stage because last time, thanks to Yachiru more so, we were able to get up to like 35 stages. The first time Limit Breaker came around, most people, myself included, only really got to like 25. Either way though, before we start breaking down the characters that are best to be used in this particular Limit Breaker quest, let's go over the rules for the particular slots. So in slot number one, we are going against Mind Attribute Arankas. With that, the three most important rules that you do want to follow is using a hard character since you are getting a two times damage output, a melee heart Aranka, because once more you're getting an additional two times damage output for just being a melee character, and then if you can have the Aranka killer, you're then getting an increase on your kill effect by two times. There are freeze pulls on this particular map, but you might not really have to worry about that with just some good maneuvering. So before we even do look at some other good characters, the main idea here is that you do want to use Kilge. He is going to be the best character for slot number one, one of the best characters for Limit Breaker, period, right? He has the Rampage skill, three melee collision attacks, but most importantly, he recovers every hard character's recharge by 20% every time you move into another map. That is going to be absolutely insane in any Limit Breaker quest, especially right now where this slot number one is basically designed for him. And there's definitely going to be some other good characters you can bring if you don't have him. And keep in mind, the main important rules that you do want to follow is rule number one and also number two. Because in that case, they're both giving you a two times damage output. The killer effect is the least increase. So first and foremost, you're always going to want to bring a heart melee character. And if you then can fulfill the killer role, then go for that. Next up in slot number two, we are going against heart no affiliation enemies. And the rules include melee damage times two and killer effect times five. Ideally, in this case, you want to bring a fan of White. And then lastly, we have slot number three, where we're going up against Technique Aronkars. Now remember, for those that missed the update that we did get last month, slot number three is the flex spot. You don't have to meet any rules here. Realistically, just bring your best power character. If they have an Aronkar killer, sure, that's great, but it's not really going to matter that much. You'll see here, there's no extra rules. There's no damage increases, and I believe even the enemies themselves have less HP. So a simple character for everyone to bring, for the most part, might just be Thousand Year Blood War Yamamoto. Because to my knowledge, I don't think there's even that many good Technica Ranker killers. So ideally, you do want to focus on slot number one and slot number two, if you possibly can. They're the important ones. That's where you potentially need a particular character, or you need a character to meet the rules. And then slot number three, you can just bring your best character. Sometimes you don't even need to bring a power character. If you saw our run last time, we used a full speed team despite slot number three being designed for a heart holo killer. And it was thanks to our team build that I was able to actually get, I believe, stage 35 played, which is absolutely insane. And I'm very curious to see this time around what is going to be the highest stage that the community can go to. Hopefully 35 plus, right? Be nice to see if we can potentially get somehow higher. Either way, though, let's have a look at some of the characters that we can bring. So for slot number one, we want to bring a hard character with the Aronka killer, and they want to be melee based. So realistically, you have a few good options here. Now, as already mentioned, the best character that you can bring is going to be Kilge. He's going to be really good here with the extra recharge, the extra damage output, and Kilge in of itself is just a really good character. So if you have Kilge, if you did pull it, definitely do use him. There's no other better character. If you don't have him, though, you have some good options. In this case, a character definitely a lot of people will be bringing if you don't have Kilge. Potentially the next best character is, of course, going to be this Ichigo. Really high damage output, is a mini character, is hot, does have the Aranka killer. He meets all three rules. To some people, this character might even be better than Kilge if you have him, you know, duped out, right? A lot of people have this character. He has the built-in long stride. He has a good damage output thanks to his Frenzy 2. 100% more damage to enemies not affected by an ailment. And he can also hit the enemies if there are any in the particular maps. So if you don't have kill game, your next best character to bring is, of course, going to be this Thousand Year Blood War version of Ichigo. Our next best character... I mean, you could get away using Isane. I don't know if I would personally do it, unless you're maybe like a massive Isane fan and you want to get as high as possible with Isane. But another great character, the third best option, I would say, is this particular Yoroichi. Once more, she's another good character, good damage output when she does inflict stat elements. She is, for the most part, constantly going to be inflicting stat elements since she does have that increased chance to do so. That will let her get her SP boost. It will then apply weakening so she can do 50% more damage. That will be good against the enemies that have poise, that have like a really high damage output. She's the Yoroichi, so she she is quite fast, has some good strong attacks, depending on the map layout, which we will check in a minute. She might be really good in this quest. 
In fact, if I didn't have Kyoge, I would probably be using her because I do have a max transcendent, but I'm not really too sure to be fair. It doesn't take tickets to run Limit Breaker, so I'll definitely be doing a few different attempts trying out different characters. Other than that, I mean, again, there's some decent options, Isane, Shuhei, and even, you know, Zangetsu, but I personally wouldn't bring them. Your next best thing to do is just to disregard the Arank Killer and bring your Nen next best heart character. And in that case, really, the only person I would bring for, like, speedrunning is really Bruno. That's basically about it. So if you don't have the good at Ranky Killers, that being, of course, Yoruichi, Ichigo, or Kyoge, if you have Bruno, he will do a decent job. After that, we're going against Heart No Affiliation Enemies, so let's do that. Realistically here, in this case, when it comes to Mind No Affiliation Killers, there's not really much of a competition. White is without a doubt going to be the best character here. Keep in mind, the rules itself does want you to bring a melee character. So if we do melee, it lessens the list even more. And yeah, no character here is going to compete. And ideally, in this particular quest, you do want to have Killer Advantage. And you do want to be a melee character. So if you have a fan of Urshi White, bring him. He's going to be amazing. However, if you don't have him, your next best thing to do is just disregard the mind character. You don't have to bring a mind character. Of course, it's ideal here. But the main thing here is to bring a melee no affiliation killer. So if you can't bring White, your next best option probably might be one of these characters. As you can see, there are a few more options here. So Nelio and Gin, I personally don't have them. If you maybe have them duped out, you have not of a better option. They might be good to have. Additionally, someone like, again, once more, another character of fun that can be used in both slots here. Thousand Year Bubble Round 16 Ichigo. He's a melee character with no affiliation killer. He isn't going to be getting attribute advantage, so his damage output's going to be lower than White. But if you have not of a better option, he might be worth bringing. And then probably the next best character is going to be Sam Fan of Versi Uryu. But last up, let's check the third slot, right? So in this case, we want to bring a power character. So any power character realistically you can bring. But when it comes to speed running for limit breaker purposes, realistically, like the only two characters I can think of is potentially this Kenpachi, the Safi one. And of course, Thousand Year Battle Yamamoto. I think for a large amount of people watching this video, Yamamoto is going to be everyone's go-to. He very well might be my go-to. He's been out in the game for a year now. Many people have constantly summoned for this character to try and get him 5 5 for guild quest purposes. But even at 1 out of 5, but especially 5 out of 5, if you have him max transcended, he's going to go through the quest quite easy, right? Or you would like to fix so. Doesn't have killer, but I don't think it's going to matter. Of course, though, if we narrow it down a tad bit more and do a run to killers, then you're going to have these characters. Unfortunately, I don't have the two characters that you could potentially use for this quest, that being Yuma Chica and also Mayuri. Although I wouldn't really, even though they have like, they, they have the attribute advantage and the killer advantage. I don't know if I would even want to bring them. They're not really the fastest characters. Yuma Chica lacks a lot of range. You'd probably end up using more strong attacks than you want to. And Mayuri, again, range on his SA1 and 2. His SA3 is good, but he's not really a speed clearing character. He'll make for a, for a good character if you're just trying to go through the quest and you don't care about getting a high score. But if you're trying to challenge yourself and go as far as you possibly can, I'm not sure if I would want to bring those two characters. And I guess some old characters from the past, which is crazy to think about because they are like three years old at this point. Fifth anniversary Ichigo might actually do the job. Even Rukia, the Thousand Year Blood Roll Round 14 version. Even Bruno, maybe. They're not going to be as good compared to newer characters with really high damage output. But maybe you have these characters in your box sitting there, max transcended. I know I do. Maybe they'll be a good third character. I'm not really too sure. Although one thing I do want to say is that there is a potential team that you can bring. Right now, we just need to figure out who's going to be good on the third slot. So, of course, number one is going to be Kyoge, right? He's going to go through that quest super fast. But remember, every time you move into another map, he recovers every hard character's recharge by 20%. If you saw our team last month, we used a full speed team. And the idea was using Macy in the team to get everyone's strong attacks ready to go, even if we weren't using recharge links when they were next available. And we should be able to do the same thing potentially this time around too. And it's mainly thanks to Kyoge. So keep in mind, it's only possible if you do have Kyoge. So for slot number one, you want to use Kyoge, right? For slot number two, when we want to bring a no affiliation killer that is melee based, what you'll see here, Ichigo can be used here. Of course, white will be better, but in the idea of using a team, thanks to Kyoge, every time you go into this particular map, Ichigo's strong attacks will be ready to go. Maybe due to that, you could go with a full stamina damage build, not really care about recharge, because every time you next use him, his strong attacks will be back. These two will pair quite well together, and it might actually make for a good team. But that then brings us to the third character slot. This is kind of the iffy one since we do want to bring a power of Ranky Killer. But maybe, again, this is a big maybe. You might be able to get away using 6 out of Ashi Eisen. You might be able to get away using Yoruichi. She does have Killer. If you have her duped out, the better. I did. That's what you want to do. If you're doing a team like this, you want to have that third character max transcended. If you're trying to go for like the highest possible stage clearance. But yeah, she might be a good third character if you are using a full heart team with Ishigo and also Kyoge. I definitely will be trying that team. But I think for most people, the convention 
mention all right will be slot number one, Kyoke or Ichigom, maybe Yoruichi. Slot number two, you want to bring White, don't have him, or maybe bring Concord Ichigo. And then slot number three, you might be better off bringing either Ichigo, the 8th anniversary version, or Thousand Year Budwa Yamamoto. With that said though, on Twitter, they've actually showcased the map itself, showcasing Kill Game more so. Kind of cool they do do this. So let's quickly have a look at the actual map layout itself. Keep in mind the quality is quite bad because it is Twitter, but we can see we're in the uh, Aranka map, right? So maybe we can actually go for Caleb's strategy here. So you can see they're using Kill Game for slot number one. They're using white for slot number two. This looks to be quite a linear map, so maybe Concord Ichigo would be good here. Anyone with a beam really would be good. This map definitely will be annoying. Coincidentally, they're bringing Grim Jam? Okay. Okay, I mean, it's a weird one. I'm not sure why they're bringing Grim Jam. They also got burnt too, so this is going to be like their character that's bringing them down the most. Map layout, though, is looking quite fine thus far. Someone like, again, Yamamoto or Ichigo would be quite good here. Definitely don't do what Malik Oliver's doing here, bringing a... Uh... <laughs> Bring in a uh, Grim Jam. This map looks quite good. One SA beam or combination of a SA2 would be good there. Yo, look at that paralysis. That's kind of crazy. You definitely want to be immune to status on that particular stage. I mean, you can still kind of get around it. You would have to use like two strong attacks and flash step quickly out of it. This map, again, quite linear. A lot of linear maps so cards with beams here would be like, really good. That one looks quite easy. Barely any enemies there. One strong attack free from Yamamoto would probably be enough. So stage seven's gonna have the little item where we can recover a bit of strong attacks. Oh, they're getting hit. All of us plebbing. All of us plebbing right now. That map also looks quite easy. I'm seeing some good potential here to get higher. So I think that right there was either all the stages or most of them. But map player looks quite good, I will say. So with that said, lads, that was the video for today, breaking down the next set of Limit Breaker quests, which will be here in less than a week's time. I'm looking forward to it. I have fun playing this mode. Definitely excited to try out Kyoke and see how good he is really going to be in this map. And at the same time, I'm going to have fun experimenting with some different teams, layouts, and characters to see how far I possibly can take this map. Because as of right now, if I possibly can, I want to try and get above stage 30. Which I might be able to just do, because I do have a final version why it max transcended. I do have a max transcended Yamamoto. Unfortunately, only a 1-5 Kyoge, but Kyoge's damage output is going to be so high, I don't think dupes of him is really going to matter all too much. Either way, though, let me know what characters you plan to use for this quest. I'm curious to know, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, and peace.